Hello, welcome to session four of Tile Basics. Today we'll be focusing on the run test uh, leg of the profile that we're building, how to run the test, take data, and return to the main menu. So we'll be working with a prompt action, we'll be filling in the run test uh, leg and moving on to other aspects of the profile. So what we have is we have the profile we've been working on and we are going to fill in the run test option, you know, how to take a sweep, get data, and when we're done, return to the main menu. So what we need to do, one of the first things we need to get done here is we need to fill this in as if we're talking to an instrument. The, the simulator doesn't require us to initialize the instrument because it's, it's being controlled by the sim. But in a real application, when you're talking to instrumentation, you need to use the init block in line and put the instruments that you are using in the selected side so that it will, you know, quote, initialize the instrument as the test flow happens. And fortunately, this does not interfere with the sim operation. So we can just run this and we can watch our data change. So if I run the profile and I select run test, it'll go through, simulate, simulate initializing the instrument and we get fresh data. Now, it's great that we can get the data. We'll get into graphing it here in a minute, but um, when we're done taking it, <clears throat> we need to get back to the main menu and how we make that happen. We use the prompt. Uh, when I spoke about the actions, I talked about how versatile the prompt is. Well, in this case, the prompt can actually function as a, um, as a jump. So if we put the prompt out here, we'll call it return. If we put, put the prompt out here and we don't put any messages in, in the choice window, we say multiple choices only. So we're bypassing, you know, wiring in the two options that we'll get to later. And then in the jump to, we just say main menu. We don't give it the choice of jumping anywhere else. We just give it one choice. So it'll the logically, it'll come into the action, say multiple choices only, see that there's only one choice and the logic will say, well, we have to pick that one. So when we do this and we wire this in, we'll go from the sweep and I'll run this now. And you'll see that when the sweep is complete, it'll go to the return and jump back to the main menu. Great. So now we've got it to where it'll run back. And as we work through this profile, we'll add clear data, we'll add test information, we'll add other things, and we'll tie them all to this jump so it goes back to the main menu and we'll have you know, a tidy small profile that completely works, which is what we're working towards. So these things are great and well and good, but you're probably thinking, you know, Larry, it's awesome to have a thousand data points, but how do we see it? Well, what we will do is go to the project palette, which is, you know, you got the palette and then you have the project tree, excuse me, go to the project tree. And where it says graphs, you can either right click and hit add, or you can just highlight it and click the plus and a graph will appear. Now, in the interest of, of screen space, I also take graphs and tables and put them over this window to the right so that I have room, you know, room to operate. So this is the basic graph and we'll get into the detailed, the detailed settings. We'll have a session dedicated just to the graph upcoming. But what we can do is go into the graph, into the data items, grab dat spec and H, add it to the graph. And when you add it, you get this properties tab. So you know, magenta doesn't really show up good. So we'll make the color light blue and hit okay. And there we have graphed data. So now we can actually watch the data change a little bit as we run the test because the noise, the peaks will stay the same because they're set up in the sim, but you'll see the noise floor will change a little bit each time we rerun. It clears the data, replaces the data. So that's getting the, the sweep function to work. 
the next thing that we want to do, we have the graph and we're running. So what do we wish to do next? In this case, we probably need to add vertical and horizontal data. So if we're going to do that, then we need to use the prompt as a choice and choose between horizontal and vertical. And how we make that happen, we can break the link from the init, move horizontal kind of up and out of the way. And we can actually copy actions. So we could take sweep H, we could do a copy and a paste. And when you click paste, the software will give you a warning. Hey, this could be dangerous. It's not anymore in tile seven. And then we can put sweep H1. It'll just append it with a one. We'll make it sweep V. And then what do we need for sweep V? Well, it's already got data, but it's the wrong data. So we'll have to create a vertical data element. The instrument's already correct and all the other settings are the same. So what we really need to do then is go to data. You can either create another one or we can literally do a copy and paste of the data item and just change this to vertical and call it raw horizontal, raw vertical data as opposed to horizontal. So now, move these over a little bit. We'll come into the palette and we'll get the prompt again and put it in place. Now, what we're going to use is we're going to take full advantage of the Boolean choice here. So we've got a path that's a yes and it goes to one action and a path that's a no and goes to the other action. Well, in this case, we're going to have the one path be called horizontal and one path be called vertical. Now, interestingly enough, when you wire to this prompt, wiring into it's no problem. When you wire out, the first connection you make will be the yes. No matter what direction you go on the, on the flow chart, the first connection you make is the yes. The second connection you make is the no. And they will highlight one will be green and one will be red. So let's do the yes. We'll do the prompt to sweep H. And then we'll do the no prompt to sweep V. And you can see they're two different colors. One's green and one's red. And if we open the properties of the prompt, we can see that horizontal is going to sweep H. Vertical is going to sweep V. And in the message, we can say, which polarity would you like to test? As a question, we can change the name of the prompt to polarity, question mark, because it's asking the question. Also, while I'm here, I'll change the init. I just always make it init SA. So now we can go to vertical or horizontal. We can go ahead and wire vertical in. On our graph, we could actually add vertical data, make it a different color. We'll call it light green instead. Now, because the two data sets are identical right now, whichever one was the last one plotted is what color it will be. But if we go now and we rerun vertical data so it doesn't match the horizontal data, it'll be slightly different in the noise. There we go. You can see that. So we can run both, both polarities. We can return to the main menu. We can display the data on the graph. And now we have to decide, um, you know, how, how we want this all to look in function. You know, do we want to leave this this way? Do we want to... Um, you know, do we want to split the graphs and have two different graphs? Do we want to, you know, have different colors? I mean, these are all choices that you can make. One thing I would like to do, though, is when we go to the run test and the polarity comes up, you'll notice that we have this older looking window. If you recall in the earlier session when we made the main menu, 
the same thing applies where we can highlight that item and go into the properties and change the prompt dialog to true. So when this runs, we get back to a push button style dialog, like, you know, so it's consistent. So we can rerun the horizontal data. It'll go through, place it on the graph, return to the main menu. So as we go through, we'll, we'll have more and more decisions to make about how we want things to look. Eventually we'll split to a second graph and we'll add tables, but we're moving along really well in actually developing our test. In a fairly short time, we've built a menu, we've built options, we've done the run test path, we've gotten data, we've displayed it. It's really, really fairly simple to do all these things. So in session five, we will go over the graph settings and the, uh, you know, in adding data, the presentation, the color, all of the properties, we'll be setting that up in session five. So come back for that one. Thank you.